I'm Ashton Addison from Event Chain for Investment Pitch Media and Fintech News Network. And today on Blockchain Interviews, we have Miguel Palencio, the Chief Information Officer of the Quantum Foundation. Miguel, it's a pleasure to have you on the show today, and uh, I'm looking forward to hearing about Quantum. Thank you, Ashton. Uh, I'm really happy to be here. Thank you for the invitation. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm actually the Quantum Foundation, the CIO for the Quantum Foundation, and I've been in the blockchain space since uh, 2013, so that's around six years. Right? And uh, yeah, I've taken part in different projects. I used to be the CTO for Bchain, and uh, I joined Quantum in 2017 full time. So yeah, I'm really happy to uh, be here and everything that we've been doing together. That's amazing. Thank you for taking the time. Let's kick it off by giving your best description of Quantum as a blockchain and how you guys believe that it is making the future a better place. Well, yeah, uh, Quantum uh, started like a blockchain platform uh, focused using, uh, on, on smart contracts and also uh, focused on security. So what we did was, was that we forked the Bitcoin Core blockchain and uh, we forked also the EVM from Ethereum and we, we did some modification to the EVM to adapt it to the um, Bitcoin Core blockchain that we also done before. And what we did also is that we implemented a proof of stake consensus and, and that's the consensus that we're running right now. So Quantum is now a proof of work blockchain. You don't have to mine it. Uh, pretty much uh, it runs by proof of stake, which means that anyone that holds Quantum points can produce blocks. So that uh, has been really good, not just for the ecosystem, but in general, for the, the entire public because it makes it easier for anyone who wants to be part of the blockchain, the quantum blockchain platform, to just get inside the quantum blockchain by purchasing a few quantum points. I mean, it's a lot more uh, cost effective than having to buy miners and, and you know having to run a big operation like what you see on Bitcoin and Ethereum. Uh, eventually grows so much that it's only limited to uh, people with you know really large funding. Definitely. That's great that you guys are lowering the barriers to entry and allowing people to get involved just by staking some of their quantum coins. And I like how you guys have combined the best of the Bitcoin blockchain with the Ethereum virtual machine. And you mentioned smart contracts, so I guess that's sort of the focus. You know, what does quantum do with smart contracts that Ethereum does not do? Well, uh, since we always focus uh, on, 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 on security, that was the main target at the beginning because you know we saw what happened with some of the most famous Ethereum contracts and uh, it's still happening today. Um, so that was the main target and we designed a, a lot of security steps to be built inside of, the, of our own blockchain to avoid these kind of things from happening. And one key advantage that we have is that quantum is a lot more scalable because we use the UTXO model that means that we can allow for uh, the Lightning Network and we also have uh, uh, several other methods to improve our uh, blockchain, blockchain scalability. Uh, Quantum basically can do over 70 transactions per second while being fully decentralized and without using the Lightning Network. But using the Lightning Network, we can take this uh, to several thousands of transactions per second. That's amazing. Well, it sounds like you guys are well on your way. Now, in terms of the development and dApps that are being built on Quantum, a lot of people are focusing on DAP development on Ethereum just because it sounds really easy. Is it easy to develop on the quantum blockchain and how many DAPs or people are working on different applications with quantum right now? Oh, it's incredibly easy. Uh, I mean, if you're able to build a, blo a blockchain application or a DAP on Ethereum, you will be able to do so on quantum. And if every single uh, DAP that runs on Ethereum will also run on quantum because we share the same uh, virtual machine and the same language support. But one really cool advantage that we have, and, and this is this is going to be launched, uh, I hope, within the, within the next year, is the X86 VM. It's a new virtual machine that we designed from scratch, and this will change the game. Like, it's going to be a lot more powerful than the EVM. It will it will allow developers uh, from different backgrounds like C, C++, Rust, and even Python will be supported. So. It will be a lot, a lot more flexible. People will not be limited to using just anything, and it's going to be a lot more uh, powerful blockchain applications. Interesting. And now, that sounds like an amazing uh, incentive to have that x86 virtual machine. But for the people that have developed DApps on Quantum right now, 
Are there any incentives? I guess you could say the scalability is one where if you're processing a smart contract on Quantum, as you said, it's, it's much more scalable. But what incentivizes developers to develop on Quantum rather than Ethereum? Why should they choose Quantum? Well, uh, even even when we do the x86 VM, we will have backwards compatibility. So any, anything that you build right now will also be running in, in the future when we have the new VM. Uh, however, we also have lots of resources for our, our community developers. Uh, we have uh, direct channels with our core development team, and we have the community developer channels. And we even built something really cool called the Quantum Book. The Quantum Book um, is like you know a, a full breakdown on everything that you can do on the block, Quantum blockchain, either using smart contract platform with the uh, templates and a lot of code assistance. So it's really easy to get started developing on Quantum. Also, we, we always, uh, you know, try to work side by side with uh, several of our, of our dApps. Uh, even we, we even did uh, a lot of joint PR with them. That's great. And I guess really with this blockchain ecosystem in its inception and everyone's trying to grow and bring this amazing technology to the mainstream, you're really not trying to compete with Ethereum and Bitcoin, these other blockchains. You're really trying to complement them. Would you agree? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, we, we believe there's a lot of space in the, in the blockchain ecosystem for everyone. Um, you know, the entire technology, the whole industry is in its infancy. Right now, I believe we're in like 1997, 1998 of the internet era. So it was like the basic tools were available, but, you know, they needed to evolve for more powerful solutions to come along. And I believe the same thing will happen to blockchain technology. Uh, I believe in the next five to 10 years, we'll be seeing those killer applications that make blockchain be seamless and be part of our life, you know, even and realize them that we're using it. That's great. And now for the dApps that have been built so far, or may maybe it's some things that the foundation is anticipating as real strong use cases in the business world, you know, that non-technical people can understand where quantum is providing value. Uh, in a business use case, what is currently going on with Quantum? Are there industries that are already being benefited by the smart contracts on Quantum? Or is there something in the near future for the business people to understand how this is actually providing value to them? Well, we have, we have around uh, 40 different apps that are running on the Quantum blockchain. And, and you can see there's a lot of different use cases that they're trying to approach. And that that's a really cool thing. And, and two of the models, um, famous ones and, and easy to understand our uh, BVU. That's um, BVU, you can think about it like a, like a YouTube on blockchain. Like you can upload media, uh, videos, and, 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 and it directly benefits content creators because they can see um, on the app and on blockchain how many views they're getting and how how much is the revenue for each one of their, of, of their creations. And that's actually really cool. There's a movie that, that was published also on, on, the BVU, on the BVU app. So, I mean, this kind of thing is, is really cool because it shows people what they can do with blockchain and in a simple, simple to understand and simple to use way. And Robin 8, Robin, Robin 8 is really cool. Robin 8 uh, it is for, uh, uh, you can upload content also, but you share or buy or even purchase your, uh, your copyright and, and intellectual property. And they're revamping their own blockchain. And they're using a, a, an amazing solution for scalability, which I can't really go further on this, but they will announce it soon. So, I mean, this kind, this kind of thing uh, is really cool, and, and it will show people what they can do with blockchain. But not just that, but it will, it will start to get in the hands of, of normal users, which is what brings adoption for any technology. Yeah. That's great. And speaking of adoption, one of the reasons why Ethereum was so popular is because of the wallet infrastructure and the interoperability with the ERC-20 standard to allow all of these different tokens and coins to fit into one wallet. Is the, Q, uh, the quantum wallet, is it very easy to use? Is it easily accessible? Or are there other coins you can store on there? Or does it really require a specific download? And do you see that as a barrier to entry for mainstream adoption? Well, yeah, the quantum quantum uh, UI wallet allows for any any QRC twenty any any DAP that to be uh, set up and run and run on, on our own uh, wallet. There's a lot of documentation that we have available for that, and it's really easy. You you can actually set up your your own smart contract or your DAP that you purchased 
on the quantum QT blockchain in a few minutes. It's really easy to do. That's great. And the quantum coin specifically, I know it's used for staking to help mm -hmm. maintain the network. Uh, and, but is it also used for gas fees or what, uh, what else is the quantum coin used for in these dApps? Uh, yeah, it is, it, it is used for gas fees and also it's used for uh, um, maintaining security of the, of the blockchain itself. Because since we use the proof of stake uh, consensus and we didn't go proof of work, uh, one of the key points that we have for security is that doing a 51% attack on quantum is almost impossible. It means that anyone who wants to do it will, ha will, will need to buy 51% of all of the quantum coins that are, are on the market. So, I mean, it, it will be really, really, really expensive. So it's almost impossible to do it. Mm -hmm. That sounds like great security. But in terms of scaling up, you, and it's hard to take over the network, but uh, is it like 70 transactions per second, is that going to be enough? Or what is the scaling protocol moving forward? Are you planning on expanding that? Because 70 transactions per second will likely not be enough to work multiple oh, yes. international businesses. Yes, we're, we're aware of that. And that's one of the reasons why we're working on the Lightning Network for Quantum. That will be one of our, of our uh, main uh, targets for scalability as and we're also doing heavy research on new technology that's currently available like Mimble Wimble that you know was launched with Green and that just allows for uh, scalability but also focuses a lot of sec on security and privacy so you will be able to develop stuff that hasn't been done yet which is um, uh, anonymous assets like privacy assets privacy applications that this is something that the financial institutions might really like, because one of the one of the uh, features they don't like about public blockchains is that everything is public, and the fact that they can make some of this information private is something that will cater to a lot of different industries, not just the financial, but is something that will be really, 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 really popular. In the future. Well, it sounds like you guys have a great plan, um, but and hopefully you can execute it well. But in the coming years, you know how is the Quantum Foundation going to sustain itself? Are the revenue models built into the enterprise solutions that you guys are providing? Or are you receiving grants? Um, how do you see the business sustaining itself moving forward? Oh, we did, we did a really big ICO back in 2017. And it was uh, around March. So we, when we planned the, uh, the entire development, we separ separated funds to last for about four years. but. Uh, as you know, the market went up and, and our resources actually became uh, larger than we originally planned. So, yeah, we do have funding for our, quite a, a number of years. But at the same time, you know, uh, we recently signed a partnership with Google Cloud and we did one last year with AWS. And what we're doing with them is, is also uh, focusing on building SaaS applications, blockchain as a service applications. Well, these blockchain as a service applications will help us obtain more funding and, and, and pretty much be you know, uh, a stable and self-sufficient company in the future. That's great. It's You need to have a, some kind of incoming cash flows eventually, uh, unless you're going to do a 2CO or something like that. So it's great to see you guys working on building some business models. And Google and Amazon sounds like amazing partnerships to have. So congratulations to that so far. Is, are you guys expanding your team? Uh, are you doing more marketing? How do you see the foundation expanding itself moving forward? Oh, we, we're always we're always uh, doing marketing on anything that we do. Uh, our marketing has always been focused on on things that are real. Like we try not to use hype. That's not our target. Has never been our target. And we are expanding because we're we're, we're actually hiring uh, several different developers. Uh, we're looking for talent, and it's, and it's available on our website, quantum.org. Anyone who wants to work for Quantum, they can go in there, and there's uh, several, uh, yeah, there, there's there's several options available. There's one, one that we really, really need right now is mobile developers. So, <laughs> anyone who's really talented in this, they can check out our website and sign up for it. Awesome, Miguel. Thank you. I was just going to ask if there's people looking to get involved. I guess quantum.org is the best place to go, uh, and to find more information about the project. And that's all the time that we have for today, but I'm really looking forward to following up with you guys. It sounds like you have a lot on the go. And as you expand the team to see the solutions you're providing uh, as this blockchain uh, as a solution sounds amazing. So congratulations on everything so far. And uh, I'm looking forward to speaking to you in the near future.
Thank you, Ashton. Thank you so, so much for the invitation. And uh, yeah, I hope to speak to you again.